So let's move over to two rookies in 2019 that you know, are in some pretty interesting situations, whether it was splitting carries, dealing with injury at different points. It's Miles Sanders, the RB15 in PPR leagues, or Devin Singletary, who finishes the RB32. That's the Buffalo Bills running back. Uh, he finished 32 in PPR scoring. And just as a caveat, guys, just so you know, everything that we're talking about here is PPR scoring. We're just PPR guys. That's what we like to play. Uh, but of those two, I have to take Miles Sanders running back for the Philadelphia Eagles. He was an absolute monster down the stretch after Jordan Howard went out. He had 21 points on the road against Miami in week 13. He had 35 points uh, against Washington in week 15. He had 26 points versus Dallas in week 16. So certainly if you're a fantasy owner who had you know, your hands on Sanders in the fantasy playoffs, you're gonna try to get your hands on him again and for good reason. Uh, he played really well when given you know a larger workload and i expect the eagles coaching staff you know even though they do heavily favor a running back by committee approach and splitting carries i remember last year we had names like darren sproles uh still getting touches for them you know i expect doug peterson and, and his staff to look back at the tape and see look Miles Sanders is one of our best playmakers. He's an explosive threat, whether it's you know checkdowns out of the backfield, giving him the ball up the middle, you name it. He is a, a absolute beast, and I can't wait to watch what he's going to do in 2020. Um, but I got to think Doug Peterson's going to look back and say, hey, we got to get Sanders the ball in space. We have to get the ball into the hands of our playmakers. He's shown great receiving chops uh, in a you know checkdown down heavy offense the Eagles run the ball seventh most in the NFL and Miles Sanders had 50 receptions which uh, puts him at 12th amongst all running backs in 2019 another interesting stat that I found on him and this is absolutely reflected when you watch him on Sundays is Sanders has a 32 percent juke rate which is fifth amongst all running backs and, and what that number comes from what that juke rate means it's the total number of evaded tackles divided by total number of touches so Sanders is in the top end of that and you know one of the biggest things that we look at for potential fantasy value is can defenders bring this guy down and for Sanders they cannot nobody want to wants to tackle him um, so I'm taking him here I think he's going to be an absolute beast in 2020, uh, and I'm taking him over Singletary. Uh, Alex, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, Miles Sanders is a guy I really like for 2020. I think, you know, he's a very talented player, and he's going to take another step up in 2020 as a running back. Um, weeks 11 through 16 in 2019, he was actually the running back six in PPR points per game. Um, so to me, he did show some workhorse potential, um, both on the ground and uh, in the passing game through the air. But to me, I just think Doug Peterson is going to continue to roll with that running back by committee strategy that he has always used. And I think Miles Sanders is going to see some of his upside uh, limited because of that. We saw Jordan Howard this past season have over 500 yards on the ground and six rushing touchdowns. Uh, and that's after missing the last several games of the season. We even saw Boston Scott come in uh, and have 250 rushing yards and five touchdowns because Doug Peterson, again, didn't want to roll out just one guy 100% of the time. So Jordan Howard is a free agent. I think it's going to be really interesting to see in this offseason whether they decide to bring in uh, another running back in free agency or in the draft if they spend draft capital on a running back. Um, those are going to be some things to look out for because if they do bring in a guy in the draft or in free agency, that's where you maybe take a step back on Miles Sanders. But if they don't bring in a significant amount of help, that's where you have to look at Miles Sanders and say, wow, he could actually be a star in 2020. Uh, so definitely look out for those things. But I personally do think um, they're going to bring in a guy to give him some relief uh, and give him some rest over the course of the season. So kind of moving on to, to my guy, Devin Singletary. Um, he He's such an electric player. He was a third-round draft pick out of Florida Atlantic, and we saw him kind of get a slow start being ramped up in the NFL. Over the first four games of the season, he only had five carries a game. Over the last eight games, he had 16 carries a game. So he only played 12 Ooh. games in his rookie year due to injury, but he had 775 rushing yards That's uh, on 151 carries. That's 5.1 yards per carry. That is fourth in the entire NFL um, yeah. In terms of yards per carry, efficiency on the ground, he should see much more carries in 2020 if he can continue to get closer to that 16 carries a game 
we saw over his last eight. Uh, Frank Gore should be gone next season. That should open up some opportunities close to the goal line uh, and also in short yardage situations. And also he did only have the two rushing touchdowns in 2019, but Josh Allen had nine rushing touchdowns. He was actually top 10 in the NFL in rushing touchdowns. So you've got to think that while Josh Allen is a great uh, mobile quarterback, he's a great QB sneak guy. He's going to have uh, several rushing touchdowns each season. Nine seems a bit high. I think it would be very realistic to say a couple of those go to Singletary in 2020. And then the last thing on Singletary is his efficiency as a receiver. He only saw two and a half receptions a game uh, in 2019. A lot of that was because he was a rookie. We saw him slowly getting worked into the offense. Uh, but the biggest case for this is that playoff game against Houston. It's win or go home. Uh, and it seemed like the only thing the Bills could get going on offense was putting the ball in Devin's hands. He had six catches for 76 yards in that game. And I think there's a really good chance that Singletary uh, could see 50 plus receptions in 2020, uh, which would be a huge step forward from where he is now. So I think the Buffalo Bills do bring in some sort of help on the ground. Singletary is not really um, a workhorse type uh, running back as far as his build and his size and his stature goes. But I think a guy like a Gus Edwards could make a lot of sense. Maybe Peyton Barber, uh, they kick the tires with him. Someone in short yardage situations that can help uh, can give Devin Singletary a break um, at different times. But I think, you know, the sky's the limit for Devin Singletary. We've seen him break off a lot of big plays already in his NFL career. And I think both of these guys actually have a lot of potential, but I just love Singletary's um, electric play style and his playmaking ability a little bit more than Miles Sanders at this point. But again, it's all going to come down to what they do in the offseason uh, and what that running back room looks like heading into 2020. Yeah, both of these backfields have you know some term turnover um, and some question marks that they're going to have to address. It'd be pretty funny if we see Jordan Howard go from the Eagles to the Bills, <laughs> which I like is one of the landing spots for him. But um, you know, where, where Singletary, you know, loses a little bit compared to Sanders for me is just, just the pass catching work, um, you know, on the ground, Singletary's putting up 5.1 yards per attempt. Like you said, that's, that's top tier, uh, yards per carry numbers. Sanders isn't too far from that though. Um, where San Singletary's like six, I think single, uh, uh, Sanders is like 16 at 4.6 yards per carry. Uh, and Sanders did have 28 more carries, uh, than Singletary this season, but, it just feels like to me that like Singletary's baseline in this offense is somewhere around eight to 10 points where I feel like Sanders is a little bit higher than that. Um, and for Singletary, he's really hard to predict based on the matchups that he was seeing. He put up stinkers against Miami twice. Uh, and then he had big games versus Dallas and Baltimore, which were two of the top, uh, you know, rushing defenses. It just seems like at least for right now, in terms of his passing work, Devin Singletary is very game script dependent. You know, the Bills don't really pass it out of the backfield too often. Um, it really only is reserved for when they're down late in games and have to make big comebacks. Uh, and we just weren't able to see a consistent full workload for Devin Singletary, even on an offense that runs the ball seventh most in the league. Uh, but certainly, you know, as the season went on, he was continuing to progress. If they don't bring anybody in and, and, Singletary is, you know, the full workhorse back for Buffalo, then I love him. He should be, you know, a low end RB one, to be honest with you, especially if he scores a little bit more. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm taking Sanders just off of his pass catching work. Maybe there's, uh, we're splitting hairs here um, versus PPR versus standard. But for a guy that was on the field for 70% of snaps for the bills, um, which would be 10th amongst our running backs, Singletary still finished as, you know, an RB three. So, I don't love him. I'm taking Sanders over him, um, but certainly both guys uh, you can make a case for.